Okay. <clears throat> well, today we're going to do the full FG knot tutorial. I did one on my Instagram and broke it up into like a six part series. So if you want to see the shorter version of it, go ahead and go over there to Ethan Laguerre, Ethan dot Laguerre fishing on Instagram and see it there. Or if you prefer the longhand version, like I'm about to do, here it is. So we are going to show y'all how to tie the FG knot today. So this is 16 pound fluorocarbon. <clears throat> this is just for demonstration purposes, but this is how I like to set up the knot or set it up to be able to tie the knot. Set it up by tying a loop right here. Tie it to your reel handle basically like that. So there's tension because tension is one of the most important parts of this knot. And then another important part is to have your drag set so that you can see how it doesn't take very much pressure to pull some line out because whenever you're locking your wraps in on this knot it's basically going to pull this very it's going to start to pull your braid main line really tight and it's going to make it really hard for you to lock your wraps in if you don't have the drag counteracting that so and I decided to make this video because I've, I've, I've learned off some other people's YouTube videos, but I just thought that I have a few little tips and tricks along the way that's going to help you guys learn how to tie it a lot quicker and a lot faster. Because it's, it's by no means a knot that you're going to get on the first try probably. I mean, if you do, that's great. That's awesome. But it's, it takes a little bit of practice. Um, to get it down and then it also takes a little bit of practice to get speed with it because even after I learned how to tie it it took me a while to actually like be able to tie one consistently in under like five minutes or so so it definitely takes you a little bit more time but I truly do believe this knot is the strongest one out there for a braid to fluoro connection let's get into it <clears throat> got you're gonna want about, I'd say probably six inches or so to overhang. And I like to lay it on top to start. Lay it on top of this, of your braid. You can, I've seen guys do it where you start out laying it under, but I just, I don't, for whatever reason, I couldn't figure out how to make that work. So I start on top and then you go under, or this is what I call going under. So you're over top like that, you come under and then you're gonna be like this to start it out and then to lock in the wrap, you basically just bring everything straight. So you see how it's not really locked in and then now it's locked in. And then the next step is to go over, over like this and then lock it in, go under, lock it in, go over, lock it in. So one of the most common problems right off the bat you're gonna have is sometimes once you get to doing your wraps real quick, you forget which is your next step. Should you go under or should you go over? So when you see your right side on top and your left side of the braid on the bottom, that's when your next step is gonna to be to go under. And then when you see your left side on top and your right side on bottom, that is when you're gonna to want to go over. Because I, I, I had quite a few problems with this. I would be in the middle of tying the knot, doing wraps, and then I'd forget which, which way to go, and then it, it screws up your wraps. I mean, you can still tie a decent knot like that, but it's a lot better when you're consistently going the right direction. So then we're going to go under again. Then we're going to go over, lock it in, go under, lock it in, over. Then another, another important piece is your back tension. So on the bottom part where your the bulk of your leader is going to be, that's important when you're trying to lock in your wraps because if you don't have any tension there, they're not going to lock in nice and tight and you're going to have a bad knot. And the metric is to do 11 wraps each way. I normally just go until I feel I have a long enough knot now that I've been tying it for about a year or so. Um, but if you if you're a numbers guy or numbers girl, eleven on eleven under, eleven over, alternating. So then we're gonna go back under. Back 
back over, back under, back over. Okay, so you can hear that drag clicking, hopefully, and I have it set a little too loose, so I'm going to tighten it up a little bit, just because if you have too, if you don't, if you have not enough tension, then you see how it's kind of sagging a bunch, and I don't, it, it makes it a lot harder that way when it's sagging, so, or it makes it a lot harder to lock in your wraps as well, so if you have too much tension, it's hard to lock in your wraps, too little tension, it's hard to lock in your wraps, so you need to have that perfect even amount for it to go very perfectly, and then we're going to go over again, go under, Over, under, over, under, over, under, over. So now you can see how it's getting, getting pretty taut. And this is what I mean by when it gets too tight it's kind of hard to lock in the wraps I mean I'm still locking in the wraps fairly easily but as I continue to wrap if my drag's not loose enough it's going to become very hard to lock in your wraps correctly and continue doing the wraps so I'm gonna loosen my drag up a little bit again yeah there we go you could hear it click there Cause you basically, you want to be able to hear it click while you're doing the wraps. Oh, there it was again. It clicked so that it's basically, it makes it nice and smooth. So you can just keep doing wraps without having to adjust your tension. And it makes it a lot easier on you too. Like once you've done a wrap, hold everything and then feed your line the next way, which we're going under here pinch it again, go under, pinch it again, go, Ooh, hold on, I messed that, nope, go under again, over again, under again, over again, under again, over again, under again, there it was again, the drag clicked, give me a little bit more line. Under, over, okay. And just for simplicity's sake, I mean this, you could probably get away with doing this many wraps and you'd have a fine knot, but I don't think I did 11 on each side yet. I might have, I never count. Like I said, I just kind of go until I like how long it is. Now that we have everything to this point, you're not gonna wanna let go of the knot right now. So next step is to basically tie an overhand knot around the fluoro and around your braided main line. Now that we finally got that out of the way, good lord. Okay. So you're going to want to try to cinch that part down without letting go of your wraps. I normally let go anyways. Normally seems to work out fine for me. But so tighten that overhand down real nice. Nice and tight because if you don't, it's gonna screw the whole thing up for you. So, got it nice and tight, and then we're gonna do one more for good measure. Now it gets easier. That first overhand can be the hardest at times, especially when you're trying to film behind a camera. It really, it doesn't make it any easier on you. 
and lock that down real tight again. And then this is another part that I haven't seen in other videos. So you want to pull on your main line of your braid and your Florida at the same time, just because this is going to really lock your wraps in and let the braid sink into the Florida a little bit. Because if you don't do this, once you cut your tag end off, it's going to, your tag end's gonna slip a little bit, which it still might anyways, but that's why this next step, which is going to be cutting the fluoro tag end, is important to not cut it all the way off. I like to leave a little bit, hopefully, yeah, you can see that, a little bit like that, and then I just pull it Pull it tight again. Because sometimes that floor is going to slip if your wraps aren't tight enough. And if you don't have a little bit hanging off right there, it's going to slip through and then you're going to have to start over again. So now I do two more overhands to finish it off. Nice and tight. One more. And then just snip off your braid tag in. And now you have a finished FG. So you can snip that last little bit of floral off now that you know your knot's going to be nice and solid now, but that's how clean you want your wraps to look right there. If, if you mess up on your wraps, it's not going to look this clean. Like, and what I mean mess up, um, I mean you're, you, when you mess up the cadence of it, like you forget if you went under or over last on your last wrap and you do the wrong direction, you're going to have some bulges in your wraps it's not going to look this clean and like i said you can still it'll still be a fairly solid knot but it won't be as strong as when the wraps look nice and pretty like this so thank you all for watching this video hopefully it helps y'all break off a little bit less when it comes to your leader knot uh, i know it has helped me tremendously i hardly the knot never breaks for me anymore as i started with my line to line knots using the double uni and it's not bad but Whenever you get hung, the knot would always break and then you'd have to tie a new leader. So with this knot, I just am able to tie super long leaders on and then the fluorocarbon leader will normally fail first and then I'll still have enough line to just retie on whatever I was fishing with before. So thank you all for watching this video. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. If you have any questions further on this, we'll see you in the next one.